Now let's try for just the sound of that target to start off with. The nice big one, big blue one in the middle. Blue one in the middle. Okay, good to go. So on the top left, but you hit the blue. Top left. Yep. Okay. Let's go for a yellow one. Okay. Swing him round and back. <laughs> nice. Both of them did that, did they? <laughs> I didn't see the blue one move, but uh, you'd expect it to, wouldn't you? Yeah. G'day. Welcome to Mark and Sam After Work. Today I want to go through this rifle that's in front of me. Um, it's a Savage 10 BA Stealth um, in 6.5 Creedmoor. It's a rifle we've got across, as you see here, um, to do some shooting with and do a video on and do a review about and a little talk about it. Got it across pretty much identical as this, except for I fitted a Picatinny rail, a couple of bolts, Picatinny rail on, and put on an Atlas bipod. Other than that, it's as it was. It's fitted up with a, a scope. I've done a, just done a review on this scope as well, so that's a separate thing. You can check our videos out from that. But this is the Leopold Mark V HD in a 5x25 first focal plane scope. Very nice scope on with some Leopold rings. I'm not going to touch on that today. Um, except for maybe talk about the setup a little bit, a little while, but um, the the review or the, the, the conversation is going to be about the rifle. And that is, as I said, it's a 6.5 Creedmoor, which is which is the Model 10 barreled action. Um, it's a 24 inch barrel, 8 and 1 twist, 5R rifling, fluted barrel with a thread protector over the top of some 5.8 by 24 um, thread on the end of it. Um, good, nice, tried and proven barrel and action. It has the Savage Acra trigger in here, which is, um, let me show you it's all clear, safe, which actually measured up um, the Acra trigger with the blade safety. Um, I love it, I hate a thing. I don't mind them at all. Um, at It measured up at, ten, at two pounds, 10 ounces. So nice weight for a, for a reasonable precision trigger and still decent weight to be able to use for hunting and that side of things. Um, the rest of it, they've got the normal Savage safety side of things. The bolt, it's a decent sized bolt knob on it. Um, it's a decent action, really no issue whatsoever. Nice big bolt knob, so all function really well. Um, and I'll go into that about the magazine a little bit as we go. What it's all in is actually the MDT chassis. So it's an MDT chassis. It is proprietary made or it is made under license for Savage. So it is a different one than what you'd get. But it is essentially the LSS MDT chassis for all intensive purposes. So that's what the chassis is. What that means is it runs a, in this format, runs the AR buffer tube um, thread on the back of it which means you can run any buffer tube on the back of it. This is oh, the Drake Industry buttstock on the back of the rifle, um, which, is, uh, which is to go with an entry-level sh entry chassis rifle, um, not a bad option. This is adjustable in the way of length of pull, all nice adjustable with the simple little slide in and out of it. Um, lock that in. It's adjustable in the cheek riser height, um, so it makes that work properly. Um, it's got a decent little bit of a springiness to the, to the rubber side of things um, and actually shot quite well. It functioned quite nicely. Um, but it is probably the, the first bit that I would be upgrading if I was buying the rifle. Um, no bag rider on it and, and really a little bit wobbly and no point, no way to lock it down and it's plastic. Um, that all makes a, there's a good and a bad that goes with that. That's all really a great option for your hunting, plinking, um, keeps the cost down and really good for that sort of general purpose. For me, in a precision rifle, it's a bit that, that I, it's going to let the side down. I can't run it in a proper bag. Um, it has a bit of wiggle in it um, and it's, it's lightweight. It doesn't need to be all things that I would tend to upgrade. So it's a very easy piece to upgrade, but keep in mind with what you're using the rifle for. So it did its job, and I'll show you where we shot it a little bit, how we actually used that, but it did its job well for what we were trying to do. They run a Hogue um, pistol grip on the thing, um, and that's basically the overview of the rifle. 
Um, actually, I think it's a EGW um, zero MO rail, um, and that's another conversation I'll come back to, but that's really just a bolt-on piece onto the rifle. Um, the magazine side of things, I said we'd come back to. Um, listen, it worked fine. It is a, oh, come out of there. There we go. Um, it is a plastic Savage um, magazine. Um, this is in the 6.5 Creedmoor, so it's essentially the 308 magazine. I found it worked. I ran 10 rounds in it, and which is what it's um, claimed to be. And yes, they do go in there, and yes, they will function. But both getting it in and it, it rubbing, and how how hard you had to push your, your action to get the first one to load, um, really, uh, listen, didn't feel right. Back at nine, maybe eight rounds is where this thing functioned properly. Um, and I think for a hunter, for, for general purpose, for plinking, that's all gonna work fine. If you're using this as, a, as an entry level PRS rival, rifle, which you could do, um, I would probably be upgrading. I think there's AIS magazines, there's other magazines that will fit into this place, which will take your 10 rounds properly and do that a little bit easier, but depends what you're doing. Still function fine the way we used it. So that's the magazine. Um, similar sort of thing and I think it's probably magazine related but I found that in actually a couple of times I'd come back and just come back gently and go back forward and it wouldn't pick up the round. I had to really make sure I pulled all the way back and then go forward um, and I think that's just simply where the magazine is feeding the bullets where it just has to go that little bit further back being the long bullet in the, in the bullets I was using which by the way were the Federal gold medal match 6.5 Creedmoor bullets using the 130 grain Berger projectile. Did a little bit with the American Eagle stuff, but that's what really I was using for the for the more precision shooting I was using. Um, and they functioned well, all loaded properly, all did the right things. The only thing is, like I said, is coming all the way back, I had to make sure I went all the way back and I had to teach my brain to do that a little bit. Um, <laughs> so that, that worked really properly. Um, up the frontier, I, like I said, I put a rail on here. I like to use, I like the um, the, the wibble room, uh, which you get, that little bit of free play I like in the in the Atlas bipod. Um, so that's what I put on the front here. You could obviously simply run, it'll shoot on a bag. It's got a nice little slide on the bottom of the chassis there. You could, and as most people would, just run a Harris bipod, uh, bipod hooked up to the swing swivel stud. Um, I prefer to go to that little bit of extra effort, but that's a personal choice. Um, that's really, oh, the, what are the weights on the rifle. Um, the actual bare weight on the rifle was the, the nine and a half pounds, I think. I didn't measure, I didn't see it there. As it got to me, um, it was the 12 and a half pounds, um, is what actually just under 12 and a half pounds that it made in this dressed form here. How I actually shot it, it's a 6.5 Creedmoor. I wanted to shoot it in a reasonable precision form. I bolted one of my muzzle brakes on it. And whether you're bolting a muzzle brake on, or whether you're shooting it with nothing, you're bolting a muzzle brake on, you're bolting a flash hider, you're bolting a suppressor on, all depends on what you're doing. The way I shoot, I prefer, I've got my own, so I bolted one of them on, that's what I actually did. Um, and it shot really well, really flat, really nice, did everything as it was supposed to. Um, so that's how, that's how I shot it. Um, and I suppose that's what I'll get into now. We went out, like I said, we, we actually, brand new rifle when it came to us. Um, I didn't touch anything apart from put the muzzle brake and the, and the bag rider on it. And then me and Sam both went out and had a little play, um, both in running it in and shooting at some rocks and bits and pieces and making sure our scope was zero and that sort of stuff. And then we went across to this little, um, I, th I haven't got the proper measurements, so I'll have to go out and measure it, but I think it's um, a 12 inch, yeah, it would be 12 inch by um, 18 inch target, so it's a silhouette. Um, with some, the round disc in the middle would be the five inches or 120 mil. And the yellow one's gone too. Um, and then the triangle and all that you'll make sense of okay, is so we were actually shooting back. at that plate um, at just over, two, uh, just over 200 yards um, as our first stuff, the little play, using it with the factory butt stock, um, just with the muzzle brake. Like I said, shot like that. Both of us had a bit of a plink and you'll see us here. Um, I'm just going through and finishing off a little run there and you see Sam going through and doing her bits and pieces. So you see that, that all shot really nicely. Maybe the I referenced there away. that I have to, um, that target we've only just got, we've got from a local gunsmith, he makes them up. 
<coughs> they get used a bit in the police and the military side of things. I want to set up in the target, and I haven't got it in the, in the paddock, I should say, to do a bit of this sort of shooting at it. Um, and I haven't got it set up on the right angle, though the, the, the little swingers weren't quite swinging and resetting properly, so I've got to mess around with that and get that working properly. But still, great little target, and that was our first little play at it. Next thing, in the same format, same ammo, still you're running the 130 grand burger, um, gold medal ammo, went out to just over 600 yards. Um, and that's my, that's a square, it's an 8 inch head, so it's a, a 8 inch by 8 inch, um, and that's the falling plate. Went down there, shot really nicely, okay, um, worked really well. Um, once again, I'm shooting f from, it's not off hand shooting, but it's shooting just off the shoulder, there's no bag or anything underneath there. So, with a good scope, with a good balance, the, the bipod, the way the chassis works, okay. Brown set on there, that okay. shot really nicely, it's very easy to get on there. That's obviously, to get there, that's just over. 1 MOA, well it's, it's 1.2 MOA at, at, the, um, at the 600 yards. Another hit. It was about the same spot. Hit. 6 o'clock, uh, 1 inch up from the bottom of the plate. Oh, just underneath. Yeah, I don't know if that was too high or too low. I'd say too low. I thought it was too low. I'm looking at the trace. <laughs> Oh, it, it hit it. I was in that right lower edge, so oh, just okay. on the edge. <laughs> oh, the fail. <laughs> well, it still hit, but it didn't move it. <laughs> Got to hold up a little bit, obviously. I've got a little low. I've been holding up a little bit. Okay. Get him. Round he goes and out. <laughs> Target well, down. Well, that shoots nicely. So yeah. shot really well. Got that down without too much trouble. Okay. So that's what that went like. The next thing I did, um, and I wanted to shoot out at a thousand. Um, and go uh, push it out to really where this thing is, where I would be buying it for, shooting out a thousand and plus. Um, so you could, I could have done that with this factory butt stock on here, with how they come for it. But I really wanted to be able to put it properly in a bag, and as much as you can put the toe in a bag and work like that, that isn't the, going to see the real quality of the rest of it. So I actually did a little upgrade. You still could do that, probably could have a similar result, but I had bigger things in mind on the day. Um, so I actually put on just a, it's a, a, a no, no brand um, aluminium unit with a bit more weight in it that I'd modify and put a decent bag right on the, on the bottom of it, which I put on the back of the rifle. It also raised the butt pad up and all the bits and pieces that you would do in a larger caliber. Not so necessary in this one, but it had it on there. It gave me the advantage of a bag right on the back of it, but it gave me the little distraction of the fact that I couldn't get the cheek riser low enough to suit the scope which is set up quite low on this one still enough when i say couldn't get it enough i still could get there i could still get a full um eye picture of what was going on i could still see everything i could still use it but i was a bit crinked and a bit squished down but so it doesn't look quite as comfortable but it wasn't bad to be truthful um, and that was more a case of i had changed over a part on the on the rifle nothing to the fault of the rifle at all just the bit that i had to bolt on there but as you see um that was easy actually a thousand yards we're on it was all shooting very easily for factory ammo and shooting out there worked really nicely um the only thing i did wrong was um i um well wrong but anyway i shot the chain happens you know once every year or so um and i managed to shoot the chain and knock it down but still that was essentially four hits on plate 
and the rifle shot really well, very consistent, really happy with it. Scope's also performing well at that score. I was only running at the 15 power at that level, but really shot nicely, very easy to get on the target, very easy to shoot. So once I shut the chain, I thought, okay, let's go out to, um, it's not the best weather as it started to rain around here and I got no dust or real signature of that sort of stuff. But I had enough data um, to be able to work out what I was going to get onto target. Now, as much as this is a big elevation scope, it's set up on a zero in my base um, on this setup. So it means I can't get my full internal adjustment. I can't get the full 120 or 34 and a bit mil. Um, but I had enough adjustment in there to be able to dial on within one mil. So get up to where I was just needed one more mil, which was one mil of hold on. Um, in truth, I wasn't expecting to get closer than within probably six feet um, of the target with a little bit of shooting, a little bit of data and all the rest of it. And we don't know exactly what the wind's doing. We knew at our place, but out there that's a, over another hill and is it going to be different? Um, so that's, I uh, was a little bit of surprise to see this um, on in the first hit. Moving, bottom edge, uh, on play, yep. Uh, so uh, 5.30 and it's just like three inches bottom edge. Holy moly. <laughs> well done, right. got him. Uh, let's go with a bit lucky first. <laughs> let's try and see if we can back it up. Cool. Wow, that's a really good. I'll hold top edge. Radio. Hopefully they go over the top. Yep. A tall. Uh, just saw it above uh, in the in the shadow. So nice and straight, but possibly. I'll hold back down into the radio where my first hold was. On plate, hit uh, just above centre. Twelve. Uh, As you saw, top edge. Um, that shot really well. The 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 butt pad in the sorry putting the butt stock on side of things was really about taking to that level. I'm not at all saying it couldn't shoot at that level out there with um with this butt stock on it. It is just the butt stock side of it, but certainly makes it easier to be able to perform with at least a, a decent bag rider to run in a bag in the format that I shoot. Uh, but as you saw, you know, in the closer stuff, this was too, still shooting very well with, in the form that it is. And because of the nature, I run, was running, like I said, my muzzle brake on there. So makes it shoot, um, makes it, there's less thump going on. But the structure of a chassis and this chassis in particular, having a very straight push, even though this butt pad's a little bit high, a little bit low, I should say. So it's not directly in that line. It is still such a straight push that you saw that rifle where it was shooting was it was functioning nice and flat and working really well. So, um, yeah, I, my overview of it, my, my thoughts on the rifle, where it actually sits, I think for where it's positioned, for what it is, an entry-level chassis rifle in a do-it-all form and an upgradable form, I think it's a really good option. I, I like the way they've done it. I like the things they've done. They haven't spent money where they didn't need to. Um, you get a very good functional core um, and everything worked really nicely. I, I myself... You know, the, if I was buying the thing as a hunter, I think it's probably pretty close to perfect as a go and plink and just as a go and bite rifle, I think money for value in a really good place. Um, for me, if I was buying it and using this thing, um, I would be certainly looking at upgrading the buttstock. I think that there, it's just, like I said, if nothing else, there's a little bit of makes it easier for me, the shooter, to go with an upgrade there, but it depends what you're doing. For, for a hunting rifle, for a do everything rifle, this buttstock probably has a win over the over the um, over a bag rider, a heavy one like I would use, because this just it makes it a little bit lighter in the overall package. Um, and I should say, by the way, I mentioned the two weights that I was talking about there. Nine and a half was the factory weight bare. Twelve and a half is what I with the with it with the um, with the bipod and the and the um, scope on it. I would probably had it up with my butt pad on it, the muzzle brake on that bits and pieces, probably be just over 14 pounds would have been the weight that I was actually shooting it at. Um, 
but like I said, for, for, for the general staff, this is a very good option um, and it is out of the road more than anything else. So nice and clean and easy to get around in your shooting out of a vehicle or in your general jobbing, that sort of stuff. Has its sling swivel stars and all that sort of stuff. So it's still a very good option for, like I said, very specific to what you're doing. Up the front here, the, really being able to run the Harris Biopod, shoot on a bag, all that sort of stuff, functional like it is. I prefer the, the, the style of the Atlas Biopod, so being able to get on there and uh, that does that nicely and that's where I would go with it. Um, and magazine for your PRS, um, I tend to be a single feed guy. I tend to, from a precision stuff, I like to single feed them in. But for shooting in a magazine, as I was doing in <laughs> for the majority of what I'm shooting here, um, I found that um, the this magazine works fine. But as getting your full 10 rounds, making a little um, clean on that side of things, and the the guys who don't like plastic because you're going to break it and that sort of stuff, then yes, that, that, that is a place you could upgrade. Trigger wise, I really found it fine. Um, I haven't tried to adjust them. I don't know. I don't know enough about the Accu triggers. Um, but really, that was a really good. That was a really easy to use. It was clean. It was right. It wasn't a top level um, target trigger, but it wasn't bad either. So that's probably about it. Um, yeah, I like it. I think there. I think it's a good option. Um, yeah, it would be something that I would be happy to be working with. Um, and I'm glad to get the some trigger time behind it and get to get to show you guys. Anyway, guys. Let us know any thoughts on that, what you've got comments about it, um, and um, I hope to bring some more rifles to you shortly. Thanks for checking in on us. We'll catch you next time. Hi guys, Sam here. For folks that are interested in our products that you will have seen in our videos, these are all products that Mark has designed through our experience in ELR shooting. We manufacture them here ourselves. The likes of our adjustable bag bases, bag riders, bipod systems, muzzle brakes, shot data recording sets, and even our great fun little 22 long rifle target. These are all available in our web store, the links to which are below this video, along with our contact information. And guys, we work hard at putting these videos together, so we appreciate all the help we can get. For those of you who haven't subscribed, don't forget and hit the bell so you get notifications of when our videos come out. It would be awesome to get some financial support. So for those of you who can, you can purchase support bits on our web store which help us bring these videos to you. Thanks for watching. See you next time.